you miss a line in the game, you reset. You miss it on the track, you could die. I know this track. I've raced it a thousand times. That's what I'm talking about. That was a clip from Gran Turismo, based on a popular racing video game, but also on a true story. Joining me now for more is film critic Richard Krause. Good to see you, Richard. Nice to see you. So this looks like a lot of fun, I have to ask. Is it a wild ride? It is a wild ride. This is called Gran Turismo, based on... Uh, a true story. So sometimes truth really is stranger than fiction. Uh, you've got the story of Jan Martinborough, who was a Gran Turismo player. It's a racing simulator uh, where you race on very famous racetracks from around the world. You have a steering wheel, there's foot pedals, uh, you're driving, in quotes, uh, very high performance cars. And uh, he had spent thousands of hours doing this and perfecting his game, became a very high scorer on this, around the same time that Nissan thought, what a great idea. Let's take all the best Gran Turismo players from around the world, pit them against one another, pick one of them, and then enter them into uh, being part of Team Nissan and go into the world of real world racing. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. And, and Jan won that competition and went on to have a very credible career as uh, a race car driver. And this movie is one of those fist in the air kind of inspiring sports movies. Uh, it is essentially a series of very exciting car races with some family drama, some twisted metal, a little hint of romance, uh, a little bit of melancholy wedged in between the races. But the characters do evolve over time. You feel for them. You want good things to happen. Uh, and it doesn't give anything away to say when they do, you, you, you feel better on the way out than you did on the way in. So I gave Gran Turismo, based on a true story, three out of five stars. And it's in theaters this weekend. Okay. Next up is Golda, starring Helen Mirren mm -hmm. as Golda Mare. What did you think? Uh, this is an interesting movie, uh, I think, probably because it really is only the story of about 18 days in the life of Golda Meir. So you have the prime minister of Israel. Uh, there is uh, Syrian troops gathering on the Golan Heights, and she has to figure out what to do. Her uh, military advisors are saying, make a preemptive strike. She doesn't want to do that, uh, but she fears that if she does do that, that there will be uh, retribution or perhaps uh, disapproval from some of her strongest allies, including Henry Kissinger in the United States. And so the story unfolds in this film of the 18 days here. And so when I was watching this, what I kind of felt was that I was watching part two of three of the Golda Meir story. It felt like uh, a part of her history that was disconnected from the rest of it. I wanted just more backstory. I wanted more history. Uh, a life of the uh, magnitude of hers deserves a full-length treatment, I think, uh, kind of like The Crown or something like that, where you would have the ability to really dig in and tell the entire story. As it is, you have a very intense retelling of 18 days here with a towering performance from Helen Mirren. So it was interesting, but for my money, a little flawed. I gave Gold a three out of five stars, and it's in theaters right now. All right. And now we have Dreaming Wild, a mm -hmm. film about unrequited dreams starring Casey Affleck and Zoe Deschanel. What did you think about this one? I like this one. Uh, this is a slow burn of a movie. It's based on true events, uh, but it feels kind of like a, a song that goes through verse after verse after verse after verse before getting to the chorus. But the chorus is pretty great, so it's worth waiting for. And it's the real-life story of Don and Joe Emerson when they were teenagers in the 1970s living on a rural Washington state farm. They made a record called the Dreamin' Wild, uh, and it did nothing. No one bought it, but it was a, a collection of kind of soulful, psychedelic pop uh, music that uh, 30 years later was rediscovered by a record label who wanted to re-release it. They re-release it, it becomes a critical hit, and it revives the career of uh, Donnie and Joe. Joe has gone on to building houses, so 
for him, it's a bit of a lark. But for Donnie, who wrote all the songs and sings them and has been trying to make a career for himself as a musician, uh, this is a very big moment in his life. So he's kind of torn between the anxiety of success and uh, his ambition because he really wants it. And it's a really interesting push and pull, nicely brought to life by Casey Affleck. And the scene near the end where Casey Affleck and uh, the man who plays his father, Bo Bridges, kind of have a, a long conversation over what's happened over the last 30 years is worth the price of admission. It's called Dreamin' Wild. It's in theaters right now, and it's worth a look. All right. And what would you rate it? Oh, uh, three out of five stars. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Richard Krauss, film critic, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me.